No, I'm there you go. Hi, thank you everybody for being here this evening. It's so wonderful to see your smiling faces, and I'm here to stimulate interest in these courses, to answer any questions you may have, go over some logistics, and just generally share my excitement about Excellence Seminars International. Uh, these Excellence programs have been incredible in my life. It's really fun to see folks that are young in the audience because I have two kids, although my babies are grown now. Um, they've both taken the courses and it really helps us um, have a language that makes this feedback loop so that my kids and I really connect using the same tools and language. As a matter of fact, they've come to a place where they say, you know what? Our best friends, our, our boyfriends or girlfriends, they need to take the courses too. So it's fun. It's, uh, it's just really exciting to see you here. So thanks for taking time out of your evening to be here. And um, what I'd like to do tonight is to let you know that there are grads present that have the blue tags. And then folks who haven't yet taken our courses have the red tags. So feel free to mingle afterwards if you have questions. Don't just take my word for it. There are people here that obviously really are invested in these programs or they wouldn't be here this evening. And uh, what I'd like to do is start by asking you, what is it something that you would like more of in your life? So. Money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go for, for more money. Okay, I'm gonna use that arrow up. <laughs> okay. okay, who else would like some more, more of something in their life? More fun. More fun. That's one of my favorites. Uh, time. More time. Success. More success. Thank you. <coughs> okay. One more. Travel. More travel. Okay. And what would we like less of in our lives? Stress. Less stress. That one makes it to the top of the list, I think, probably most of the time. Confrontation. Less confrontation. Demands. Fewer demands in our lives. And one more. Worries. Fewer worries. When we have more money and more fun and more time and more success and more travel, we kind of feel like these go down sort of on their own. Part of what we want to do is, is, is generate these things in our life because part of what happens is a byproduct as these goes down. Uh, in our courses, we like to talk about how to use the tools to do both sides of these. What I want to do for a moment is take one of these things and look at what experiences we get when we pick one of these. So, for example, if, uh, if we had more money, what experiences would we create with that? Because money in itself, it, oh, it might seem really cool. It's not that entertaining. It just sits there, it does nothing. But when you use it, you get experiences out of it. So what experiences would you get out of that more money? It could generate a lot of the other four that are on the list below it. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so the money, the money could generate more fun. So, so when we're having those fun experiences, using that money, what what are we doing? What 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 fun are we picturing here? What, let's ex, let's expand to an experience. Spending time with our family. Spending time with our family. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call that connection. So the experience of connecting with people. And so, so, hey, let's make it a million dollars, not just more. Let's make it a real hard number, a million dollars. What are you going to spend a million dollars on? I'm going to watch the symphony. You know, watch a symphony. Okay. And so when I'm listening to the music of the symphony. In I'm, Vienna. In Vienna. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm listening to the symphony. I'm in Vienna, and I'm having the experience of, of maybe wonder and awe. And, and then something bliss. delicious and bliss, something delicious at the end. So that, that almost sounds almost like a spiritual experience, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, or a, a, a discovery, mm -hmm. discovery of new things. Okay. We'll go with discovery. So these are experiences that we like to create when we have more money. Do we want to pick one other thing? 
One other experience that we get. Um, you can stick with the money one. Buy a fast car. A fast car. Okay. <laughs> Excitement. <laughs> All right. So, so I, I want to create an experience. I shell out some money for this fast car. I'm driving around with this fast car. What experiences am I having when I'm driving this fast car? Do you like the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excitement. All right, I heard excitement. exhilaration and I heard excitement. Let's see if I can spell exhilaration. There we go. Exhilaration. That's probably right. Close, Close enough. Close enough. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> so one of the things that's really important is it's it's easy for us to go through our day and say what I want is more money. And sometimes it might be really worthwhile to stop and say, why? why? Why do I want that more money? What experience is it going to create for me? It's also really easy for to say what I don't want. And then the question might be again, why? What, what is it that that's uh, interfering with for you in your life? And so when we do that, it um, reminds me to tell you that the experiences of three fictionary characters. And these three fictionary characters, I'm going to change colors of pen here just for fun, are Eve, write that name way up here in a nice flat font, and then we have Bri, and we have Bodhi. These three fictionary, fictional characters are hopefully at least a little bit familiar to you. And some maybe more or less so than others. Eve has a motto in her life. And Eve, Eve's motto is, life is tough and then you die. Life tough. And there's the end. <laughs> <laughs> and so when Eve's going through her life, she figures the purpose of life is you just make it through. A bit of a treadmill for her. And, and what Eve really loves in her life, she loves being right. It feels so good. And, you know, when Eve's going through her day, what she really dislikes is unfairness. This life just feels unfair because that's why it's all a big treadmill, right? And what she's really lacking in her life is sort of a sense of self-awareness. And, and as a byproduct, that she lacks confidence. And the thing that's the most threatening for her, and I'll just put that arrow to remind us here of confidence, the biggest threat in her life is vulnerability. She, she doesn't want to break down and say, you know what? It just always feels like a treadmill to me. So, this is Eve. I can tell you that there have been moments in my life, parts of this really resonated with me. But then there's Rai. Rai's motto is go, go, go. And his purpose in life, he says, you want something, you earn it. You earn your value. And, he loves perfectionism. He just knows if he stays up late enough, if he works hard enough, he's going to get it not just right, but he just, he's going to get it perfect. What he dislikes is, ah, I got these backwards. What he loves is accomplishment. What he dislikes is imperfection. So we're going to bear with me here. Let's see. So if we say loves perfectionism, so what he dislikes is, is not accomplishing something. That's just if it's left undone, no, no fun. And what he really lacks is time. He's just too busy. And the biggest threat for him is burnout. So if there's anybody here in the room, I know I've been this one too. If there's anybody in here in the room that recognizes this, that's just a little bit of awry in each of us, maybe, at any given moment. And then there's Bodhi. So 
We get a chuckle out of life is tougher than you die, and I think go, go, go is kind of a catchy motto. And Bodhi says maybe not quite so catchy, but it really deeply appeals to me. Bodhi believes his motto is, I am the author of my life. Star of my own movie. I can create what happens next. He really believes that the purpose of life is to just keep growing. And he loves learning. Just starting to sound like a grad of our courses. <laughs> <laughs> what he dislikes is stagnation. He's gotten a taste of what it's like to stretch and grow and reach and really feel, feel vibrantly alive. Once you get a taste of that, it's hard to go back. What he lacks is a group of like-minded people. It's pretty easy to go out there in the world and hear a lot of people who are talking about their burnout, who love being right, who believe the world's unfair. He, what he's really like to do is be around a bunch of brats. <laughs> And um, the, the threat that he has for him is that sometimes he can, he can start to be reminded that the world's full of negativity. He uses his tools, okay, he does all right. He's got his good deflection shield, but once in a while he's like, is that real? Is that, can, can, I really, can I really choose all my moods? So these three folks live in the same neighborhood and they work in the same company. And they're driving to work and they all end up in the same traffic jam. So maybe you've been the driver or the passenger in one of these scenarios. Eve hits the traffic out of work. Of course there's traffic. There's always traffic. Life is so unfair. It always happens to me. Right? He gets in traffic. He lays on the horn. He signals. He cuts people off. He's like, you know what? There's a way to do this. And, and actually, he's pretty frustrated because if people were a little more perfect, they might actually keep the flow of traffic going. It is their <laughs> fault that they're not actually making things work right. So he gets to work and he's just feeling kind of righteous. Uh, Bodhi gets to the same traffic jam and he says, you know what, I can't move the cars that are in front of me, but I can put this uh, audio in and, and listen to something that inspires me. I can sit and think about a trip that I want to create or, or what, what kind of a, a experience I want to create at work. And so he says, you know, I can choose my reaction to this traffic. They get into their workplace, they all work at the same company, and the owner of the company says, I've got great news. We've got a big project. This is going to be a big deal for our company. And he says, oh, of course. I'm going to have to work harder. You know, and they never acknowledge the work I put in. This is going to be just awful. It's so unfair. I says, well, you know, I was busy, but I'm going to show my accomplishment and you know, I'll, I'll put off that vacation a little bit longer. I, I, I got this, you know, I, I'm not going to burn out, not this, but I've got this. And then Bodhi says, wow, I wonder how we got this big contract. How can I create a situation where I can work a little harder, help the company, help myself, and still have some good Bodhi left for when I get home. They all got the same news, they all have the same traffic jam. And then at the end of the day, they all went back to that same neighborhood they live in. So in all three of their households, somebody else was supposed to make dinner. Different households. Eve walks in, realizes nobody made dinner. What are you supposed? What's running through Eve's mind? Nobody's made dinner. So unfair. So unfair. <laughs> Eve says that is so unfair. And then what do you think Eve does? Just cooks herself something and nobody else. <laughs> All right, so Eve cooks, okay. And uh, we've got Rye, we've got half of Rye here. Rye walks in, realizes nobody's made dinner. She's got that big project, very, very busy person. What does he do? Take it away. That? Take out. Take out. Yeah, you're going to make more money. <laughs> All right. So uh, so he says, okay, we're going to do take out. 
And hey, now I don't need to actually chat with the rest of the family. I can just open up my laptop and work while the takeout comes, right? Everybody can kind of do their thing. So, Bodhi's. Well, nobody made dinner. That's something that Bodhi might do. Let's all pitch in and make dinner together. And have there fun. you go. Let's all pitch in and make dinner. We can make a win out of this. And maybe we can, along the way, discover why that agreement didn't happen. Mm. Right? So, uh, Bodhi says, you know what I wanted to create was connection. And I can still create it, even if dinner's a little bit later. So the reason that I bring these folks up is that they give us a window into our lives. Who here is getting stuck in traffic? Okay. All right. Yeah. You guys said everybody in this room has been stuck in traffic. Who here goes home to other people in your house? Okay. Yeah. A whole bunch of us, right? And who here thinks that they have an agreement with some of those other people and they don't necessarily always follow through? Okay. So what I'm going to ask is, let's pick one part of their day that resonates with you. What's something that's like, yeah, okay, that's familiar. Who here's going to think one part of their day that, that just, that's something that resonates with me, matters more to me than the other parts? The traffic for me. The traffic. Yeah. I've been, I've gone through the spectrum of those. Yeah. Yeah. From sheer frustration to thinking I can navigate through it in some manner, yeah. through uh, giving up and putting in my audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> giving up led you to the tool. Okay. All right. So, what I'm going to invite us to do is walk through one of the tools that we use in our seminars. So, the data is the traffic. I got in my car, I did everything that I normally do, and here's all those cars. So some of you haven't started to drive yet. Many of you have. Those of you who haven't started driving, you've been getting programmed. <laughs> what it's like to drive, <laughs> all right? You already know what the reactions are supposed to be because you already believe that's what drivers do. Okay? And for the rest of us, <laughs> we had some programming that happened early on. We have some beliefs that believe that, that happened, and that programming and that beliefs funnel down, and we got a whole lot of that at a very, very young age, first six or seven years. As a matter of fact, in the first six or seven years, our brains are just kind of like a big sponge, and that stuff gets put in there, and we're not even filtering it out, we're not necessarily even challenging it, it's just being put in there. And we end up with these thoughts. Some of us are like, oh, driving looks like fun. Some of us say, ooh, driving looks like a blood sport, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and when we have these thoughts, they bubble along, and they come all the way over here. And just for fun, because it's a heart, I'm going to switch to red pen. And those thoughts give us the feelings. We know what it's like to get in a car. We know what feelings result from that. And that's an arrow. And those feelings turn into action. Here's our hand. <laughs> You're worse than I am. <laughs> now you know I'm an artist. <laughs> All right. So there's the hand. Now for some of us, <laughs> we use different parts of our hand while we're driving, responding to this trap. <laughs> Ten and two, that's what I was thinking. I'm sure that's what I was <laughs> Okay, so that's the actions that we do. And after we do all those things, way down here, we get our results. What's interesting to me, what was actually revelationary, revelation, yeah, revelationary to me in the first course was that it wasn't my feelings that caused my thoughts. So I always thought, you make me feel something, and then I think about what to do, and then I have an action that had it all backwards. So for the most part, subconscious or consciously, it's our thoughts that are creating our feelings. So then you get all this programming, you get a little older, and you go out and you engage with the world yourself. 
So now you go and you have a relationship with money, you have a relationship with other people, and we pick up what I call relationship ghosts. And they invite you to have more programming and more beliefs about your relationship with those things. We kind of carry those around with us. And what we invite you to do in our seminars is, is to take a look at those things and say, those feelings that I, that I am having, what thoughts are coming from those? What programming and beliefs are there? And is, is that still working for me? Can I go back to the data? So in the ex example that we had of um, Rye and Eve and, and Bodhi, in each of those, they could come in and ask a question, hey, I noticed dinner's not ready. Instead of going into, oh, it's so unfair, of course not, I guess I'll make dinner and I'm gonna feel resentful. The thing that's important for us to know, I'll take the pen off, <laughs> is that Eve and Rye and Bodhi, a slight name change, is everybody. They're all around us. And we're little bits of everybody. And if we wanna be really effective, we want to, to pay attention to when these things aren't working well for us. We, and we want to change those results. So you remember this? Got a good mental picture? I created it in emojis for the people online. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Some data, some frame. The rest of you just use that. These are really good at memory. Okay, so, so let's say that, um, that in all of this room we have people who have done courses who haven't. We talked earlier about what we want, more money, more time, that kind of thing. Let's pick something, one, one result that you would like to create that you've been working on for a while and you haven't quite achieved yet. So we're going to pick one here. So who's going to say, okay, yeah, this is the thing I want. I'm going to help you get it, guys. Let's let me speak up. Something you want. Back of the room. Success. Success. Okay. All right. <laughs> There's another one on the chair. It is red pen time. Uh, okay. I want success. So I'm going to draw your brain. See, there's that artist right there coming out again. <laughs> and here's your conscious brain. And your conscious brain says, I want success. Now, you've been on this planet for a while. What's going to get in the way of that? What's going to stop you from being successful, do you think? Myself. Fear. Now you're a very wise young woman. <laughs> Fear. So what are some of the things that when we think, okay, I'm going to go be successful, I'm afraid of something. What are some of the things we might be afraid of when we're going to tackle that success? Can't do it. Can't do it, yeah. You know, I, I, I've seen success, and it's hard. I, I, don't, I don't think I can do it. There's something else. No one else has done it. No, yeah. You know, I, it's, I haven't seen one other person do it. I've heard about it, but I've never really found the person who's actually done it. Anything else that gets in the way? Judgment. Yeah, you know what? If I reach out and do this big thing that I've never seen anybody else done, people are going to think I'm crazy. And somebody else said, yeah, and I'm too old. I should have gotten started way younger. Not I'm worthy of it. Oh, I'm <laughs> too young. No, nobody my age has ever gotten that done yet. Like not worthy? Yeah, you know what? You know that somebody much, much more important than me has done that. Too might much fail. work. Uh, yeah, and I might fail. And you know, it's too much work. It's a lot easier to just stay home. I don't know how. I yeah. don't know how. I missed one other one. Not smart enough. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't think I'm smart enough. There's a lot of smart people in the world. So, if we take a look at these things and remember all those programmings and beliefs, part of what we invite you to do in our seminars is turn some of those around. Because you know what? It's going to be really fun to be the youngest person who's ever done that. Watch me do it. Because you know what? I don't have to be the smartest person in the room. I just need to enroll people to help me. And I'm certainly smart enough to do that. And for those of us that are too old, I say we're just getting warmed up. Mm -hmm. But part of the trick is for each of us to really identify those things, believe those things, and make those things different for us. Change those thoughts. Identify those thoughts. That's step one. If you have something here that you're looking for, and you're not sure that you're going to get there, this is a really vital step for us to do. And so for some of you, the big step in that is your comfort zone. So we're going to start in the middle here. Comfort's actually a pretty lovely thing, isn't it? We call it comfort for a reason. 
cup of tea, soft blanket, maybe a kitty cat. <laughs> <laughs> when you're really comfortable for a long time, though, it can be your stagnation zone. Just outside of that is your stretch zone. If you go a little too far, we have something called the panic zone. That place isn't so fun to be. These here, when you turn some of those around and you decide, you know what, no one's seen anybody do this, and do I have the audacity to do it? Say, so, yeah, go ahead, stretch. Do something you haven't done before, even if you've never seen anybody do it. Has anybody ever here seen somebody do something that they haven't seen done before and you kind of admire them for it? Yeah. Yeah, somebody, the, the first person that in your in a relationship that's vulnerable, wow, I feel closer to them now. So one of the things that we really invite you to do is you can come out, hang out in your comfort zone once in a while, but don't stagnate there. Stretch, stretch into this into this comfort zone, expand it. And if you do that, it's kind of like a muscle, it gets a little easier each time. There's a time that you've never done that thing before and you stretch a little bit, you do it again, stretch again. And you can become more and more amazing as you realize that you are that amazing. So one of the things we do is we invite you to take a look at those thoughts. Stretch past those into places. Like, I think I believe I can. As a matter of fact, yeah, I know I can. So all of you at one point in time were thinking about taking your first course, Reset for More Excellence. It might have been called the Pursuit of Time. And what was the big thing that you kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to actually step into taking that course. What got in your way? Time. Time. Okay. So you went and you said, boy, they're going to ask a whole weekend of me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I want to spend that kind of time. How did that work out for you? You stretched. You said, okay, take it on faith, take it on I love. took time off of work. You took time off of work? Yeah. And so you, you stretched and you said, okay, I, you know, I'm not very comfortable this time. I'm going to stretch here. And how'd that work out for you? Well, I made it to the second course. You made it to the second course. It enticed me enough to keep going. It enticed you enough to keep going. So you decided yeah. the time that I spent in there yeah. was time well spent. Yeah. Yeah. And with I the people I spent it with. And with the people you spent it with. Yeah. Something amazing that happens in that room. And I don't know about you guys, but after I took my first course, I know logically I still have 24-7. I feel like I have more time. I'm more effective with it. I, I know what I value more, I have more clarity. Okay, that's a great one, time. How about something else? What's something that starts again? Yeah, no, no, that, that was that's something that was stopping me that I would push past it. What was something that got in somebody's way and they pushed past it? Money. Money. Money, yeah, okay. Okay, but you took the course. You said, okay, oh, it's a lot of money, but I'm gonna stretch. How'd that work out for you? Uh, to quote someone in the back row, I signed up for the second course. <laughs> <laughs> that was so great. I want to keep going. Payment plan, payment plan. Payment plan. <laughs> and so what, what, it's, it's a big statement when you put money on the line. And you kept doing it. You went to the next course. Mm -hmm. So, so you stretch, you said, this is a little, this is a little more than I want to spend, but I'm going to do it. And, and based on results, because you took the second course. Mm -hmm. And have you seen that? That, that investment of money has returned Definitely. to you in other ways? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I found the same thing. I was a single mom when I started taking these courses. And the investment I made in myself taking these courses, it's the best investment I've ever made. I do it all over again. Okay. Anybody here thought, oh, I don't know if I have the energy? That's one that some people say. Ah, that's thinking about what, what's getting in my way. Ooh, not sure I want to do that. Well, actually, yeah, because it used to go to midnight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, so good news. It doesn't go to midnight anymore. But yeah, okay, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really have the energy to do self-improvement. I'm kind of like in this whole, like, life's unfair, you know? Or, you know, it's kind of really feels great to say, oh, I'm so close to burnout. I'm so busy. It's so important. But you know what? For those of us, this was the one. We, we said, okay, all right, I'm going to try it. How did that work out for you? Somebody who thought that was feeling brave. Oh, you can't sleep Sunday night. 
Okay, tell me why. Why couldn't you sleep yesterday? So it, the energy builds over the whole weekend, and then you're just so excited, and all the people you met, and everything you just learned, and it's yeah. like you just can't shut your brain off. Yeah. Yeah. You're like totally amped up Sunday night. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. You get so much energy from these courses, and you become kind of contagiously energetic. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's a fun thing. You actually can kind of recognize grads. Uh, <laughs> because that, that tends to be one of those things that, uh, that comes about. So I'm going to turn one more page. So we started talking about some of the things that we've gotten from these courses. So let's just for fun write a few more. So we talked about we got energy from the courses. What are some of the other things that you got out of taking these courses? Confidence. Confidence. Oh my gosh, that was me. <clears throat> I used to shrink. Somebody looked at me and I just shrank almost, almost physically. Physical, more friends yeah. more friends and really fun good ones, quality right? friends yeah yeah more friends and those friends tend to be uh, pretty good at um, at being supportive right mm -hmm. yeah in a way that's pretty effective okay got room for a couple more things what did we get out I've got one time? online that says I found myself oh yeah okay and you know, it's funny, um, being somebody who really thought that the best way I could go through life was to love others more than I love myself before I realized that was actually not possible. And then I realized, you know what? I have fantastic kids, but they're not here for my whole life. I had an amazing marriage for over 16 years, but he wasn't there for my whole life. And I get all of these things. I'm the only one there for my whole life. So maybe I should just live it for me. And who here has noticed that the more you live your life for you, the more that other people actually really enjoy being around you? Yeah? <laughs> it actually, you know, we think it's like, well, it's selfish. No, it's self-full. It's, it's self-first, so I actually give quality me to you. Okay. So these are all the wonderful things that you can get. And here's the logistics. Reset for more. Wait for it. Excellent. <laughs> Here at the Fortius, you already know how to get here. For those of you that are online, you can Google it. Uh, it is in May 31st to June 2nd, Friday from 1 p.m. to 10 p.m., so early compared to midnight, <laughs> Saturday 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. And for those of you that are here in the room for the Reset for Adults, you get $100 off for being here. Online, you get a little coupon code that pops up. And so we take it down to $5.95 because we get that $100 off. And so that is a great investment based on all of the wonderful things that we just said you get. Oh, let's turn to this page. All of these things you get for a little lower price of $5.95. But wait, there's more. <laughs> you also get a lifetime membership to our, our program. So when you spend that money, you're actually getting an opportunity to come back anytime you want. You graduate high school, you go off to college, you buy your first house. Each of those milestones, I think, oh yeah, I want a refresher. Or I want to reconnect with folks. And you just pay a $25 registration fee. And we also have a money back guarantee. So if you take a course and you didn't love it, you tell us, I didn't get the value. We don't tell you, well, this is what value looks like. You tell us. And so you have, there's a money back guarantee for it. And um, let's see, let me make sure I haven't left out any really pertinent details. And yeah, so I think I've given you the pieces that let you know that if you really want to build your life full of excitement, if you want to have more delight, this might just be the next great step for you. And for those of you that have youngsters in your life, I can speak from the heart because my stepson took the Youth Pursuit of Excellence. He came out of that with the same types of things we're describing. Energized, he had clarity, and he came home and wanted to say, so, so what results are you creating, Mom? You know, he just had a, a just different spark about him. And I have two coworkers that just went through Reset, and their daughter who's off at college texted and said, you know, what are you doing, Dad? So I'm making dinner for Mom. And she says, oh, what, what are you doing after that? He's like, and then I'm doing the dishes. She says, must be rough. He says, no, it's how she feels loved by me. Just, there's a dot, 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 
Dad? Question mark. What's going on? <laughs> so, to make a long story short, this very curious young adult said, I want to know what you guys just did. And she's taking uh, this course too because she says, whatever it is, I've got to at least check it out. So I invite you to check it out. I invite you to, to get really radically curious and see how this just might change your life. And thank you for your time. If there's a pen surgeon in the house. <laughs> and you can sign up at the back of the table. Sorry, I forgot that part. <laughs>